there and welcome to our recording today. Thanks to everyone who submitted all these wonderful questions that we're going to get to. Before we dive in, I want to introduce Michelle Ward, the One I Grew Up coach. I have had a blog crush on Michelle for at least a year now. Aww. And I know, I had the pleasure of meeting her finally at the World Domination Summit in Yay. Portland. And like I said in my post, it was love at first maze balls. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Which is the phrase that I've stolen from her. It's not copyrighted or anything. Um, and Michelle is totally the person that I wish I had known when I realized that I wanted to leave my soul-sucking job five years ago to kind of take me by the hand and, you know, lead me through the process. Unfortunately, I was kind of out there on my own in the wilderness at the time. But um, I've got Michelle here today to answer all of your questions about you know how to leave behind your career and, and what steps you can take. So we're going to dive in. Yay. yay. Um, and Bridget, I was alone in the wilderness five years ago too, and I wanted there to be someone like me. So <laughs> then I just became that thing that I, that I wanted. But I wish we knew each other back then. It would have been some nice support. <laughs> I know. It's the best. Um, all right. Well, I've kind of pulled the questions together. You guys submitted a lot. Um, Yay, thank you. Fantastic. I know, they're so good. Yeah. Um, and I pulled them together around some different themes because I noticed some things coming up again and again. Um, and the first theme is just kind of a question of, you know, I know that I want to leave my job. I know I, my career isn't for me, but I really don't know what to do next. Yeah. Um, one of the questions we got from Carla is, I know hands down, without a doubt, hand to God <laughs> leave this office job. Yeah. Must and I will. But I don't know what to do next. Mm. I wish I could throw everything down to say I'm following my dream. But unfortunately I don't really know what that is. Mm. I have an idea. I know some things that bring me joy. I know what I don't want to be doing, which is a good start. Yes, yes. <laughs> but how do I funnel all of that into something that will pay my bills? Ah. So oh my gosh, I know that feeling. That's exactly where I was when I kinda looked around and said, okay, I don't know what I want, but I know it's not this. And I spend a, um, the majority of my life chasing uh, my dream of being on Broadway. And so all of the jobs that I had were to support that. And then once I kind of came to the decision that I didn't want to pursue performing as a career anymore, it was just like, oh, well, I know I don't want to be this account manager at the startup kind of place, which is where I was at at the time. But where do I go? What do I do? Um, so I kind of see like, almost two questions in this question. One is like, how do you get out of that day job before your head explodes or you want to shoot yourself in the face or other things happen to your head that are unsightly? <laughs> um, and then, you know, how do you figure out what it is you want to be when you grow up? It's obviously tied into why I call myself the one I grow up coach because I was finding myself saying that at the age of 27. So I think <laughs> it's, two, it's twofold in, in terms of sometimes really hard to be working on both of those pieces, right? So you need to kind of figure out what's more urgent, getting out of this job where you're gonna shoot yourself in the face or figuring out what you're gonna be when you grow up. And you might decide like, I need to get out of this job ASAP. I don't have the headspace. I don't have the time. And that is awesome. Take all of your energy and time. I know there's not a lot of it when you're in a, in a soul sucking job and use that to be updating your resume, to talk to your people Spend three times as many time as much time talking to your connections. I hate calling them that. It sounds so like slimy. Talking to your friends, <laughs> your family, the people that know you, you've worked with. Get that word out. Tell them just whatever it is you're looking for, as broad or as specific as you want. Get that stuff out and then get out of that job. Um, I know what people do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Or at least be prepared to do it soon. And I know don't. Don't let how bad the economy is scare you. Um, yes, it sucks. It's totally not the best time to want to leave your job, but I've had more clients than I could count who have gotten hired in the last six months, year, six weeks. I mean, like people are getting jobs. They're out there. They're just usually not publicized so much. So, so really work on the people you know. Um, and then... Or if you feel like, okay, I could live with the day job, it won't make my head explode. You need to give yourself the time and the space to really start exploring. Um, and there are a lot of different ways that you could do this. I like that Carla said, she knows what she doesn't want to do. That's awesome. Write down those things. You know what? Ugh, stop doing list. 
this is my stop doing list. I'm going to stop doing these things. I don't want to do it. Then write a new list. These are the things that I love doing. No censoring allowed. None. Zero. Not like, oh, I love to shop, but I can't make money doing that, so it won't go on my list. That is, it counts. It's on the list. Mm -hmm. Start answering those questions. What do you love to do? What skills do you feel like you have? What strengths do you have that you want to be working on? What do people compliment you on? Um, what is it that you value in a work environment? What makes something a really exciting place for you to work? Do you want to work for yourself? Do you want to work for someone else? There are a lot of different questions to sort of answer and not to hawk my own stuff, but um, because of this, I put together a uh, career change workbook and it's illustrated and it rhymes, the whole thing, because I'm a weirdo. So it's like if Dr. Seuss were to write a, a career oh, change workbook. Here. Oh, do you have it's it here? In color. Yay! Okay, so it looks just like that, but it's in color. And it has all of these exercises specifically to focus on what are the skills you like using, what's your personality type, and how does that translate into a career you thrive in? What's your personal mission statement? How can we use that as a compass? So there are things like real tactical things, but even if you don't, buy my workbook that's totally cool just like start carrying around a, a book of the book of me the book of whatever what you love what you want to do what you want to have incorporated into your new job who that was a long answer no and you know I just want to say that's exactly what I did I mean yeah. I was in this PR agency position that was 12 14 hours a day and I kind of had an inkling of what I wanted to do, mm. but I took on another job specifically that actually paid less, but mm. I didn't work as much, just so that I could spend the time working on developing, you know, I, I think I've talked on my blog before about how I wanted to do a store originally, and that mm. requires like a business plan and capital and all of that, so I needed the time to do that. So I think that's a great point that you can get rid of the you know, soul sucking job yes. in the short term to go to something that's a little less demanding if that if you're not really ready to make Yes. This. Oh, we've had such similar paths, Bridget, because I did the same exact thing where I I did in the in the soul sucking job that I had as, as an account manager and this really horrible verbally abusive boss. I knew I needed to get out of there, but I also didn't want to just jump into something else that I wasn't gonna like and I was gonna have to leave. Uh. And so I took the time to, okay, let's figure out what do I want to be when I grow up. When I decided on life coaching, which I like banged my head against the wall that I was just an idiot, that like I was going to go from acting to life coaching. This was really <laughs> a stable, grown up job that I was looking for. Like, but I couldn't deny it's what I wanted to do. And when I did realize that and I knew, okay, I know the, the, clo the fastest, easiest way for me to fall flat on my face was just to quit my job and go get certified and go to school and then try to make money on my business. So instead it was, let's get rid of the job with the verbally abusive boss, with the Blackberry that they expect me to look at 24 seven, with the pointless travel that I had all the time and let's just change it in for, it was still a corporate job, it was in finance, which as you can probably imagine, not really my bag. Um, but you know, the, the management had my back for the most part, it was in this abusive situation. I didn't have a Blackberry, I didn't, I, wasn't allowed to give the people that I worked with my cell phone number. They didn't want wow. any overtime because they paid you time and a half for overtime. So they were like, if you were supposed to leave at six and it was 620, why are you still at your desk? Oh, yeah. Loved it. So it was like not in any way, shape or form being an executive assistant for a financial consulting company was the be all end all, but it enabled me to go to my classes on nights and weekends and build my business. And you know, two years and seven months later, I'm a woman of the world, as I like to say. <laughs> and that was a year and a half ago. Here's a little bit of a pragmatic question. Jennifer wrote, I'm desperate to ditch the high paid nine to five drag and kick off my own communications business, but I'm not sure how to transition from full time drudgery to freedom. <laughs> okay. I think if it were just me, I would just take the plunge because the urge to do this is blindingly strong. But I'm a solo mom and I worry about the implications of failure for my daughter. How do I make this work while protecting my girl? Uh, oh my God, it gets you right at the heart, right? Um, the other reason why I called myself the one I grow up coach, other than the fact that I was like 27 and saying, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up and everyone would laugh and laugh, um, <laughs> was the fact that, you know, when you're a grown up, you have grown up needs and values and priorities and mortgages to pay and children to take care of. And so, yes, I so know that feeling of like, if it was up to me, 
I would just be done with it. I'm washing my hands. I'm walking away. I'm telling the boss to, you know, go, you know what, himself, and uh, and you know, just making this happen. But when you know you're a grown up, again, these values and priorities. It's really about. I feel like it's 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 about planning. So one, it's, it's really, okay, how are you feasibly leaving this job? What do you need in place to leave this job? Um, I call it an effective escape, and I made sure to include it in Operation Creative Career Cheer because I feel like it is such a big piece of the puzzle for a lot of people in terms of whether or not they want to be entrepreneurs or if they just want to transition into something else that might be new or might pay less. Um, what do they really need to quit their jobs? How much money do you need? Do you need to figure out what insurance you're going to be on? Do you need to have certain things set up in your business or things in your portfolio? What do you specifically need um, to feel like, okay, I'm going to be ready when I see X, Y, and Z fall into place? So like for me, I didn't have a certain number um, in terms of the money that I wanted in, to see in the bank. But I knew like, okay, I need to have enough money that I feel like I don't have to run into plan B right away. And I could have a good few months of just knowing, okay, there's no pressure. I have enough money to live on. I'm kind of giving myself a severance. But I also knew that for me, I needed to make sure that I had my certification and my phone was ringing with consultation calls. There were enough people coming in, at least one or two every week that were booking these calls. I needed that feeling that people knew that I existed. So it was more than just the money for me. I needed a website that I felt was really professional um, and I needed to have the, the people coming in. But I have clients that say to me, you know what, Michelle? All I need is $5,000 and I am done. I am good. I know my plan B. I could, I could talk to person A, B, C, or D and get some freelance work if I need to and they're set. So it really is all about what you need to do for yourself. Um, and then the other piece is, you know, when there's that blinding urge to do this, and I'm, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. I would think that, that you would have a similar thing. Um, but baby steps and making sure that you do something for your business or your career change every day. I don't care if you only have 15 minutes. I'd, after a week, that adds up to like almost two hours of work. It's you need to do something every day to just move your business forward, um, and 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 that's that's yeah, that's just such an important piece. I can't uh, stress it enough. <laughs> I I so agree with that, and I know for me, um, I'm a, I think I'm a little bit of an anomaly because I definitely had like a number, and I probably have a bigger number than most people. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But because I'm, um, I'm really kind of obsessed with having like personal freedom and mm -hmm. options. And so that was for me, like something that I had to have, but that meant I ended up staying in my career a lot longer than I think I would recommend. Right, to right. Um, but like you said, doing that work every day was, you know, carrying around my notebook and, um, I would go like here in Chicago, you know, it gets really nice in the summer and I would take a notebook out to like a little cafe and sit outside for my lunch break and work Yeah, my lunch break every day in addition to like at night because it just, your ideas get better and better yes. the more they kind of marinate and then as you talk to people about them, people, you know, I don't know if your family does this, but my family goes that, oh God, what is Bridget doing now? <laughs> What idea does she have this time? Like, why does she always Renaissance soul, renaissance soul, renaissance soul. But eventually, I got to this place where I'd be telling my friends or my family my ideas, and they go, wow, that's, like, perfect for you. And that was the one that I said, okay, this is the one. Like, mm. finally, I'm, they're not rolling their eyes at me. <laughs> <laughs> they knew it made sense. Well, we don't want to necessarily put all of our eggs, eggs in the friends and family basket, but I know totally what you mean, and I was screaming renaissance soul because I use that term all the time and I'm one and like 95% of my clients are one and yeah we're used to people thinking we're ADD or flaky or we can't follow through with things and we're not really we're just people with a lot of different passions and interests and things that excite us and it's against how most of us are raised in like normal traditional society especially in the United States Take one thing and focus on it yeah right? yeah right exactly and that's when like oh my god the handcuffs come on and we go to jail and whatever so um, yeah and I think it's interesting that you said like you you wanted more money than maybe most people do and that kept you there longer but again that's you coming from your values your priority and I and I feel a similar way because I because I didn't have a number 
Um, and therefore I couldn't really estimate how long I was going to be there because I didn't necessarily have a number. Um, I, I was, I probably stayed at my job longer than if I had a number and a goal I was reaching for and I was doing that every day. Yeah. You know, that brings up a good point. I think it's good to have like a, a deadline yes. or like, right? Like a milestone that you just, you know, you're when, when X happens, yes. I'm doing my job. Yes. Right. Yes. Totally. Totally. So good. All right. Emmanuel has a question for us. She sure. is doing it all. It sounds like she said, Oh my, <laughs> I'm just teaching yoga, training to be a coach. And I know that within a year I want to be out of my day job. The question is, one, I think she has a couple questions. Right. How do you keep going when you still have to go to your bloody day job to pay your bills? Uh -huh. You know, how do you develop this real work when you still have your day job and still get some sleep? And then lastly, how does she know finally when it's time to take that leap? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, the first thing that pops into my head is boundaries, capital letters, exclamation uh -huh. points. Um, I'm really bad at boundaries. It's something that I have just committed to being like, boundaries, I must find them and enforce them and figure out what they are. And that's really hard. Um, I did that sort of, I guess, subconsciously when I was at my day job and still going with my coaching where it was like, Friday night until Sundays were sacred. They were personal times. They were going out with friends time. They were being with my husband time. Nights and the other parts of the weekends were classes, coaching, business building, I would do when I grow up work at work when I had that free space. <laughs> Good. I mean, people don't talk about it, but everyone does it. So, um, yeah. you know, and, and then I, and, and so that's really the piece of it. Like you have to make sure you sleep. You have to, I mean, being a yoga teacher and, a, and, a, and getting trained to be a life coach, it's all about self care, right? It's all about self care. And so it's tough. You kind of have to um, practice what you preach sometimes and figure out, how do you need to re-energize? How do you need to recharge? How do you make sure that you don't burn out? Because it's so easy to do when you're on a program like that. Um, and then the other piece of, oh, how do you go to your day job without shooting yourself in the face, essentially? Um, and I have a post, if you go to my blog, and you, I think it's called like eight ways to um, be at your day job and not shoot yourself in the face. like. You just put in quotes, shoot yourself in the face, it'll come up. Um, and I had a title of that. And so, and so that was, there are some like tips and tricks and stuff there, resources there. But I think that really the gist of it is you have to figure out what is motivational for you. So for me, like I had my business card like pinned up in my cubicle um, in a place where like really only I could see it. And so I was able to look at my business card. I was able to look at my logo um, and sort of be, be able to go, okay, this is why I'm here. Great. Right. When I knew in December of 2009 that I was leaving in March of 2010 and I knew exactly the day I was giving my notice because that was the day I was getting my bonus. Yay for corporate America. It comes in handy sometimes. I started a countdown clock in my Google calendar that counted <gasps> down the days until I left. So like every day I would wake up and I go to my Google calendar and it would be like 20 days, 90 days. I'd be like, yeah, it's great, 20 days. Um, so again, it's all like you mentioned something great, taking your lunch break, going outside, working on your business, setting those boundaries mm -hmm. um, and really figuring out what keeps you motivated. There's also a great book, book called The Artist in the Office, um, which I love. So if you're someone that's artistic and you're in an office sort of environment, they, she really gives you a summer pier is the author and she's these amazing drawings and just gives you really fun projects and things to work on while you're in the office so you could keep your creative sanity. Mm. You know, remembering your motivation to being at work and I mean, frankly, my motivation of being at work was making money yes. and that's okay, right? Yes. I mean, as long as you go there, I you had a lot of guilt for like even though I was working a lot of overtime, even though I had tried to, you know, pair back within a year, it kind of railroaded mm -hmm. out of control again, um, which is one of the reasons I knew I was meant to be an entrepreneur because I'm a workaholic. Right, right, right. <laughs> I really, it, I might as well just be that for myself. Right. Um, but, you know, as long as I gave them what they brought me in to do there, yes. I was just, I had to remind myself I'm only in it for the money. And I'm teacher's pet too. 
So it was, it's hard for me to not be teacher's pet, right? Yeah. But I knew from the second I got that job, I got that job, and that very month I started my life coach training. Like I knew exactly while I was why I was there, and I think that's something worth doing. Like, why are you there? You're there for a reason. What is this job giving you? As hippy yeah. dippy, optimistic, blah blah blah, and that only works some of the time. Well, my husband had a saying where he said, "Michelle, as long as you could think of three people that would get fired before you, you're okay." <laughs> that's like that's the quality of the work that you should be doing. Oh God, this is and, such a great point. Yeah, and I just went, "Oh, yeah, you're right. Perfect. Thanks, babe." And then it just it became hands off. It became like I wasn't raising my hand volunteering for stuff. I wasn't taking people's you know what and you know I was in at nine and I was out at six and I you know that's and I took it my lunch hour every lunch hour I coached in the middle of the day so I was taking clients and I was going into a conference room and like keeping the lights off no one would see I me. actually did that with, with a client right before I left it wasn't for PR work it was for um, copywriting for a website yes. I mean yeah. I, I did that I can't, dozens and dozens and dozens of yeah. times. Or I would actually, you know what? I wouldn't keep the lights off all the time. I would actually reserve the conference room because <laughs> I have balls. And I'd be like, Michelle or conference room. And it would be one o'clock or whenever it was. And I'd have the conference room reserved yeah. and I'd talk to my client. It's my time. It's my time. I would put it on my calendar too, exactly. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, phone call with and I'd yes. put the person's name or whatever because you need people to not book meetings with you right. during that time. Right. You have to really protect it. Right. Well, for me, it was pretty easy. I barely ever had any um, meetings to be in so it was like a meeting you know once or twice a month and so normally nine times out of ten it was fine but it was still like you had to know I, I mean mm -hmm. as an assistant I supported these people and I had to be like oh if you see me in a conference room like don't knock like it's not the time it's my lunch break right. you know that's what it is so well and that brings me to a question that a bunch of people have asked and I've gotten on my blog before yeah what you <laughs> and you're probably have better advice than I will on this because when I quit, I had been promoted to a director mm -hmm. a few months previously, and we were really understaffed. And so quitting was pretty hard because um, I would have been the last person fired. Right, 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 right. I really counted upon, and um, there was a little misunderstanding when I quit with my boss, not quite understanding that I, I wasn't going to st stay. Like, I, you know, I'm moving in September, and she heard that and thought, oh, Bridget's staying until September, even though I was like, so let's start transitioning me in the spring. Yeah. So what's the recommendation for people who they're ready, they're making the leap, and, and when they give their, their notice? When I went in, I had like, even though I, I knew what I was there for, I had I was like sick to my stomach, mm -hmm. I was shaking. I did it, but, but how do you? Yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. It was so exactly the opposite <laughs> of my experience. But I had a client recently, and God bless her, she was like, so concerned about her coworkers and that leaving yeah. would put so much work on her coworkers who were already stretched thin and she felt terrible about it and I was like whatever it's just a job um, so if you don't have my blase um, <laughs> evil attitude about it I think I think there's a lot to say about practicing and building your confidence and kind of rehearsing maybe it's just the actor in me but I think what could be really helpful is you know writing out write out your script right out th this is what you want to say this is how you want to say it if you if it makes it easy for you go in with a resignation letter that says everything that you say or give it to them in it you know something something how is this going to be easy for you and then like drag your mom or your spouse or whoever knows this boss and how maybe they would react make them role play with you or just if that's if that's too silly if that seems too silly then just what do you think I'm gonna get back um, try to play yeah. that role with yourself. What questions are they going to ask you? What do you want to say? And just sort of know that, you know, you don't owe them anything. But I know how tricky that could sort of be. Um, yeah, it, it can be. It can be hard when people are really are relying on you. And mm -hmm. I think you're right though about anticipating the questions. And mm -hmm. I know when I went in there. I was very clear upon. Like, here's what I'm going to say, and here's how I'm going to position it. And if they ask me a question that I don't feel like answering, then I don't have to answer it. Like, right. just staying right. on track. And I yes. think practice helps you with that. Yes. And I think if you're a hippy-dippy like I've turned into, I think setting an intention before you go in the room um, and kind of saying to yourself, okay, in this meeting I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be cheerful. In this meeting, I'm going to be firm. In this meeting, you know, how do you want 
kind of the meeting to go so you could kind of be flashing on something while you're talking that's just easy and again maybe it's the actor in me but when you know your intention this is how I want to act this is why I'm, I'm doing this and it's just kind of summarized by a little word or a phrase that you could just keep bringing to the top of your mind then sometimes that's ease that'll allow you to sort of ease into things as well um, and then go celebrate. Have like a great celebration plan for right afterwards. Oh my gosh, you think I'm You get kidding. a bottle of champagne. <laughs> yes, know what you're getting. Like before you walk in the room, know like, oh my gosh, when this is done, I know I'm getting that bottle of champagne tonight and I'm going out to dinner at my favorite restaurant. My husband bought one like in preparation for yes. the <laughs> Yeah, that's so great. And we had it waiting in the fridge for the day I finally like manned up and did it. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. I think it really goes back to like, I talk to my clients all the time about there's only so many things that you can control. You could only control what you can control. You can't control it or predict someone else's reaction, how they're going to take what you're saying, how they're going to feel about it. And so it's kind of not worth your time to dwell on that. It's more of like, how do I want to control this situation? How do I want to handle it? What will happen so that I will walk out of that meeting and go, I'm really proud about what I put out there. No matter if your boss starts yelling, crying, whatever, I mean, whatever transpires, you could only control what you can control. So just just work on figuring out what do I need in order to, you know, be proud of that. And I will say I've, um, I've put notice into a lot of jobs. Yeah, yeah, me too, <laughs> uh, me too. Because, partially because I was in PR, it's just the way you move up is every two years you change agencies. Mm. And it's always easier than you think it's going to be. Your boss, no matter what kind of boss you have, she could be a screamer or a crier or whatever, but it's always going to go like much more professionally than you predict. Yes, absolutely. All right, Michelle, Sue wrote to us, how do you maintain your positive outlook and enthusiasm when you take the leap to quit the soul-crushing, well-paying, high-status job, and then you go through the inevitable ups and downs? Is it normal to vacillate between being excited and thinking, what have I done? And how long should I expect to have those feelings? I've heard a lot of people rattle off, it takes two years to establish yourself. Is that normal or are they just being nice? Ah, oh my God. Um, well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I think that if you're doing, <laughs> if you're doing your new job well, I think that you're gonna go back and forth um, probably forever because it means that your, your business is growing and it's fluid and it's changing and I don't know if it's just me being a renaissance soul and I always want to do something new and I have a lot of interest so let's like go do a million things but for me oh my god I don't ever think there's gonna be a point where I'm at my business where it's like okay well now I'm all set hooray like everything is at the status quo let's just stay here for years and years um, there definitely are the points like the points where I feel like oh my god what have I done and I don't remember ever specifically feeling that way. I remember feeling I am so overwhelmed. I'm only one person. What have I gotten myself into by myself? I need help. Like that's more of what it is. But I've I've never felt that. Oh my God. Let's you know what? Let's just throw this out and go back to financial consulting, or let's go back to working for anyone else. I mean, I've, I've gotten rid of those clothes. I'm like, there is no, there's no way I'm going back there. And even when things are bad, I, I don't know. I can't necessarily answer the two year question because I feel like my experience and as of now I've worked with over 150 different creative types who I've coached personally and I've seen them through various parts of their business and I've never seen the same experience twice. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've seen people who right out of the gate within the course of a few months or a few weeks, like they put out a great product and they're working and their branding is spot on and their stuff is spot on and great and they have it right off the gate, but then maybe something changes in a year and things don't go so well, I don't know. Um, so I think that there's not a hard and fast formula and as annoying as that is, I, I'm really grateful for that because I don't want anyone to like look into a crystal ball and be like, oh, Michelle, you're on month 17 of being an entrepreneur. Well, you only have another six months and then you'll, you know, whatever. Um, so it's I think like that's a wedding planning checklist. Where yeah. should you be? 
yeah, at yeah, month. yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think that in terms of like what happens when you have a bad month, what happens if you have a terrible client, what happens if things aren't going the way you want them to be going, I think then going back to the theme of boundaries and just conducting yourself, I think it's just how you know how you want to run your business. I mean, I've had um, clients who were, you know, bad clients. I don't think of it, you know, but people who weren't doing their work or weren't showing up or, you know, we just weren't, it just wasn't working. We weren't working well together. And then it's for me, okay, well, what do I do with that? How do I want to conduct myself with that? How do I let them go? Do I let them go? Who do I refer them to? I mean, it's, it's, it's just kind of coming up with how do you, again, how do you want to conduct yourself in a way that you feel good with? And in terms of the bad month, I think that hopefully every smart Every entrepreneur that's a smart entrepreneur has an emergency fund, and my emergency fund is pretty stocked, um, and I hope to never have to use that money, and hope that I could just keep having it grow and grow and grow until I have about like a year's worth of savings in there, and then I could stop maybe contributing. Um, yeah. But you know, if I have a lean month, um, and right now I, I'm in the point of my business where I trust that even if I have a lean month, it won't be like I have to only eat ramen noodles month. Um, but I could go back and I could cut into that savings and then I could just rebuild when the months are great. So you just have to be prepared for those ups and downs and, and plan, go back to that plan. Yeah, I mean, I, I've obviously only been doing this for, you know, two months. I'm Yay! a little baby entrepreneur. Yay! Steps, but um, within weeks, I looked at my husband and it was just like, I'm never going back. That yeah. can't be plan B for me. Right. And, and, and he just said, You're, you always have ideas, you'll figure it out. And I think that's kind of a mark of somebody, when you know you're ready to do it, is when you just, the ideas come or you feel that drive and you just, I don't know, I, yeah. I can never pack. Yeah, like, yeah, oh my gosh. I'm like, Ugh. I know, I can't, I, I can't even handle it. And I was glad when I got rid of those clothes that I know like, oh, I just bought this because I had to work in corporate America. Blah, I'm not, I'm, I'm throwing it out, I don't care. But I think you bring up a good point. What's that plan B? And even if you want, you know, keep that book of what do I want to do when I grow up and add to, you know, what could plan B be? And maybe that's plan A too. I mean, what could you do in a pinch? What could you do? Danielle Laporte, my, my cult yeah. leader, says, you know, what would someone pay you $100 an hour for you to help them with? Um, I feel like mm -hmm. that's a really good question too. Oh gosh, and she talks about, which I love is, you know, in the beginning you're working more on kind of like the fast money. How do I make mm -hmm. money right out the gate and, and how to allocate your time between your long-term projects and just getting money in the door. And I know that that's sort of where I am right now is uh -huh. focusing on just getting money in the door and building up my client portfolio and I've got these long-term projects that I'm going to be working on. Yes. But I think that helps, that panic, if you're seeing people. I mean, one of my first clients was doing um, web copywriting, which I was doing while I was still working. Right. Um, and that's not kind of like the dream. It was fun, but that's not how I want to make my living. Yes. Um, but it was great, just that confidence of going, oh, this person hired me, and I invoiced them, and they paid me. Yay. Hooray. And you know that in a pinch, you could go back to that. Um, yeah. And I have clients that have the same thing. I have a client who, you know, said, like, I, I – made my rent by designing websites last month like oh and that's her side job but she's like I don't want to design websites anymore but I know that I, I can if I want to and she she quickly decided like I'm gonna raise my rates because I don't want to be designing these websites but if someone wants to charge me five times more than what I've been been charging for me to build their website then by all means I'm happy to do it for them if they're putting that money in my pocket and stuff like that is just so smart and she knows if people go elsewhere it's no harm no foul you know um, Chris Gillibo on his blog right now the art of nonconformity yeah. actually posted um, a challenge that he's asking people to comment for if they had to make an extra three to five hundred dollars in the next month how would they do it mm -hmm. and he's giving away like a hundred dollars to the oh, person <laughs> but I was looking on the the com you know the comments on that and like the different ideas that people have range yeah. from like, sell your stuff on Craigslist to you know mow people's lawns yeah. also to consulting I mean the ideas are just so wide ranging oh and looking at that it's like I can do this yeah I mean if you go if you go to my blog if you go to when I grow up coach .com and just and click on blog um, scroll down a bit I have a, a series called grown-up gigs which basically highlights grown-ups who make their living 
doing these like crazy things. Some of them are so neat. So I great. So the last guy that I interviewed, um, his company's called Gift Wrapped, R-A-P-P-E-D. He writes custom wraps for people. So he charges based on like how long you want the wrap. He charges between like $150 and $500. And you basically say, okay, I want this wrap to be about my papa. And my papa likes to fish. And he always wears members only jackets and blah, 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 blah. And then here are like some pictures of my papa. And then he makes the song and puts together like a, a video presentation, kind of like a music video based around the pictures. And people are playing it at like anniversary parties, birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, weddings, engagement oh parties. God. And they have these custom wraps. Like, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, that's amazing. That's just how do, that's amazing. So, you know, this is why I'm not ever, ever, ever going to be like a career encyclopedia. You know, it's never going to be my thing that people are going to come to me and be like, what should I be when I grow up? And be like, well, let me assess you and then give you a prescription. You will be, <laughs> you know, in marketing. They, like, there are people that are writing custom rap songs and getting paid for it. So... Anything that's crazy out there, whatever, like no censoring, no discounting, there could totally be a need for it. And so, yeah. I know, it's all right. Oh my God, we've been talking forever. I love it. I know. I think it's time to wrap it up, Michelle. I think so. Well, thanks for joining me today over on my blog. And I hope everybody got other questions answered. Um, and Enjoy it. Yay! Thank you for having me. Thank you everyone for your questions. Hooray! That was Amaze Balls.